Warren Bingham, thanks a lot for coming in to talk to us about your new book, George Washington's 1791 Southern Journal. Looking forward to talking to you about it on North Carolina Book Watch. But tell us, tell us about uh, what did George Washington make a trip in 1791? He was busy being president, wasn't he? He was busy being president, but it was a different era uh, because, in fact, he went uh, probably several weeks or a month or more during this trip at times not even seeing any mail. Uh, so clearly it was a different time. Uh, he made this trip south, in fact, in 1791, precisely as spring began in March 21. He wanted to visit all 13 states. This was his final trip to knock that out, to get to Virginia, the Carolinas, and Georgia. Vice President John Adams and the capital was in Philadelphia, a temporary capital at that time. John Adams went home to Massachusetts. So there wasn't uh, anybody during the there. period. Thomas Jefferson and uh, and uh, uh, Henry Knott, I think it was, no, James Madison, uh, excuse me, uh, even took a trip to New York State, rummaging around up there. So it was a very different uh, kind of a relaxed uh, time. I think Henry Knox may have been in Philadelphia, the Secretary of War. But Washington was away from the mail. He was away from uh, his cabinet uh, for three and a half months. Uh, he did finally get some mail uh, at, at a few occasions, but generally he was, he was out of things. He had left word that please summons me by the best means you can if there's a, a national urgency. Uh, but, you know, how that would have even been done, I don't know. He did leave his schedule, which he pretty much stuck to his itinerary uh, throughout the trip. But Washington wanted to see the 13 states and see the people. He was determined to do it, and he accomplished this in less than two and a half years in his first term, and this was his last trip to get it done in the spring of 1791. You know, we have a portrait of Washington that you let us see. This is uh, George Washington. Where did this portrait? That is in uh, the City Hall in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, uh, there at the four corners of the law at uh, Broad and uh, uh, Street. Let's see, what is that? Broad and some interchange there. I believe it's uh, Market. Uh, no, excuse me. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's this City Hall right across from St. Michael's Church, uh, which a lot of people know. That's the big white one with the tall, tall steeple. Mm. Washington, while there, uh, went to the top of that steeple. I got to uh, replicate that uh, journey as well and look down on City Hall, and that's where that portrait hangs. Well, um, but why would they want, I mean, what was the deal about having a portrait painted? To Charleston just had more money than they knew what to do with? Well, Charleston was a place of wealth, and they had that opportunity to do that to commemorate the, the journey. I guess at that time, uh, that was just one of the most popular things to do was to uh, take the portraits of very prominent people. And uh, that was in vogue. It's uh, like things that go and come in popular culture. Charleston could afford to do it. He's got his uniform on. And did he, did he wear his uniform as he president? He was the last commander in chief to wear a uniform from time to time. As president, he didn't wear one routinely, it is my understanding. But he did on this trip, for example, occasionally don his uh, commander in chief uniform. Uh, so uh, he still looked good in it, and uh, he would wear it on occasion. He most definitely wore it some in Charleston, uh, we know, and so uh, that was not uncommon for Washington. He looks uh, to be, in the portrait, he looks to be in good health. Was, uh, was, and Washington didn't live too much longer after this, but was right. he in good health? Well, he was in pretty good health. He had had several uh, tough bouts of uh, health, and including just a year before this, he was on his back and was not doing well at all. And I think one reason he wanted to do the Southern tour is one, uh, wanted to do it while he still could. And secondly, it was thought at that time, being out, being rigorous, being on horseback uh, was good for your health. And so this was also a way for him to recover from that very poor health that he'd had just over a year earlier. We're gonna talk on North Carolina Book Watch about um, some of the places he visited in North Carolina. Did, was, did he really have a favorite is there anything in his diary that, um, that, that he really liked about being in North Carolina? That would be a hard thing to say, D.G. Uh, I can't say that uh, anything strikes me uh, in response to that question. He did not prefer the low country. He did not prefer coastal areas. Uh, that became apparent over the years, not just on this trip, but from some of his other writings. And on this very trip, he was so happy as they moved into the red clay of the Piedmont. Uh, one reason is his horses could get much better traction, and uh, that was important to him, the health and, of his horses and the ability for them to continue the journey. So he didn't tend to like low places. Back then, there was a great fear of malaria, and so I don't think he was a big fan of the low country and uh, coastal areas. Well, I look forward to talking to you more about this wonderful book. Thanks for writing it, and thanks for sharing a little bit of it. You're very right welcome. Now. Super to be with you.